Welcome to my video series of Mole Bio Explained in 3 Minutes, where I explain a concept in biology in less than 3 minutes. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. These videos are not so long and detailed, but it has all the necessary information to save your ass before the day of your exam. So let's start. So today's video, we would talk about the clinofragment, which is a large portion of the DNA polymerase 1, and it's a day-to-day -to -day tool used in molecular biology labs. So if you remember the replication process in E. coli, then we can understand the DNA polymerase 1 has a primer removal activity. And the primer removal of the activity of the DNA polymerase 1 is based on its 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity, the forward exonuclease activity. Now let us look at the DNA polymerase 1 structure to understand the clinofragment. The structure of the clinofragment, we need to understand it. So DNA polymerase 1 has three fundamental domains. First domain is a polymerization domain, which helps in polymerizing in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The second domain is the exonuclease domain, which has a exonuclease activity in 3' prime to 5' prime that helps in proofreading. And the last domain is the forward exonuclease domain, which has a 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity, and this is helpful for primer removal. Now, TNA polymerase 1 can be digested with subtilicin, and that results large fragment of the DNA ball 1 which is known as clinofragment and this clinofragment lacks one domain which is the 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity continuing domain. Now getting rid of these forward exonuclease activity make the clinofragment very useful in multiple usage in the molecular biology field. So among many other usage the principal usage of clinofragment is synthesizing double-stranded DNA from single-stranded templates it's specially used in blunt end clonings. So filling the 5' prime and 3' prime overhangs is a, one of the important use of it. Creating labeled radioactive probes is another important use. And there are multiple other different use of clinofragment. So let's talk about how it could be used to create a radio labeled probe. So while the clinofragment is progressing in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, it has its polymerase activity and at that time if you put label nucleotide it would incorporate that into the DNA and later it could be used to create labeled probes. After that blunt end cloning is an important usage of clinofragment. So many of the cases what happens is we have our vector which is cut with a, a restriction enzyme which create blunt ends but our DNA of interest is cut with a restriction endonuclease which creates a sticky end and has 3 prime or 5 prime overhangs. But these are too incompatible to each other, right? In order for them to be cloned into this particular vector treated with blunt end, these inserts also need to be blunt somehow, right? And in that regard, clenofragment comes very handy. So what would happen is the clenofragment would sit in the 3 prime or 5 prime uh, blunt ends and it has a 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity right so it would chop off the 3 prime overhangs and in case of 5 prime overhang it would sit there and it has the 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity which would fill the gaps both the cases be it chopping off the 3 prime overhang or filling in the gap in the 5 prime overhang both would create blunted products and these, these blunted inserts could be incorporated into the blunt vectors. And that is how the cloning, the further steps of the cloning can be pro uh, proceeded with, right? So these are two of useful uh, usage of clinofragment. But there are many other usage which I'm not talking about in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you, give it, if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.